Hello my crafty friends. Today I'm doing a very short little haul video. Um, Hannah and I went to an estate sale and the elderly gentleman who had passed away was quite a collector. It was an amazing, it was just fun to look. Um, there was so much stuff there that I would have loved to have brought home. Thankfully, most of it was priced out of my price range, and so uh, that helped me uh, curb my, <laughs> my hoarding tendencies. <laughs> but um, Hannah found this lovely little lap desk that she, um, that she bought. It was $15, and um, it has a label on it that says, My Love Forever, Bella. So whoever Bella was, she either made this or had it made for him and um and it became you know it was something special and hannah's already she was already sitting and uh, writing poetry in one of her journals on it um but i let, asked her to let me bring it out here to show you um it's a very sweet little book i mean little table it's not very big but um inside it are the other goodies that we found i'm going to go ahead and move this over here this is a book called The Doyle Diary, The Last Great Conan Doyle Mystery, with a Holmesian investigation into the strange and curious case of Charles Altamont Doyle. Um, it says, keep steadily in view that this book is ascribed wholly to the produce of a madman. Whereabouts, would you say, was the deficiency of intellect? or depraved taste, if in the whole book you can find a single evidence of either marked and recorded against me. <laughs> oh, anyway, it's uh, it's written, this is a, a sketchbook. It says, it is difficult to imagine a more poignant or disturbing opening to the bizarre and hauntingly beautiful sketchbook diary of Charles Altamont Doyle, the father of Arthur Conan Doyle. The time of the writing was 1889, the place, the jury confines, of Sunnyside, as Doyle called it, part, part of the Montrose um, Royal Lunatic Asylum in Scotland. For the 57-year-old Doyle, epileptic and ailing, was interned or imprisoned, as he says, under the most depressing restrictions. Well, my goodness, that's, that's sad, but anyway, he wants you to decide, look through this book and decide if he was really um, crazy or not. Anyway, it's got a little bit of a history, um, and then it's got um, it's got a few sketches in it, you know, and some um, some different stuff. There's uh, some letters in it, and then um, this this card was in here. And it says Holmes on the front. And it says, I love you in my own strange, abstract, semi-romantic, quasi-blissful, borderline, borderline myst mystical way, Watson. <laughs> and I just can't help but wonder if if these were, you know, if this card was given from one person to another by some friends who call themselves Holmes and Watson when they're teasing each other. Um, I say that because I know... Um, my parents had a, another really neat couple that was friends with them. And my dad, um, the wife in this couple always called my dad Charlie Brown. And he called her Lucy. And they would give birthday cards to each other, signed Charlie Brown and Lucy. And that just, this made me think of that. Um, that whoever had put that card in here, you know, that might have been the case. Um, but it's got a bunch of different drawings. Um and and then there's a a little book in here, the Dallas Theater Center, Sherlock Holmes, The Curse of the Sign of Four. So this is the program from that play from 1975. And that was also in here. And there was one other thing. What was that what the other thing that was in here? Where did I put it? Well, I know there was something else. Here. A Sherlock Holmes crossword puzzle. Um, anyway, that was stuck in here too. So that was interesting. And then there's a little, also a bookmark. 
It says, I finally got it all together, but I forgot where I put it. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was a neat book. I'd never seen that kind of book before. And then here was a cute little, um, a little leather notebook for 50 cents. It has, you know, paper in it. And it says Vivian. So this belonged to, to Vivian, whoever she was. So we know that this man had a Vivian and a Bella in his life, or he collected things that some from someone else's life that had a Vivian or a Bella. And this is a, a street guide and city map of the town that I live in, Amarillo, from 1970 to 1971. And it, it talks about all the different things that you can do in Amarillo and the and the um all the names of the streets and where they go. And then there's the map. Our city map looks a whole lot different than this now. <laughs> but this is the this is the map of the city of Amarillo in 1971. <laughs> I just thought that was really cool. 1970 and 71, I was seven years old. Um, I also found these Christmas Carol books. And um, they say copyright Christmas Club, a corporation, New York, New York, Litho in USA. And that's all they say. There's no date or anything on them. Um, Summit Federal Savings and Loan Association from Springfield Avenue, Summit, New Jersey. They gave these out. And somebody's typed another song and, and added it in. <laughs> I thought those were cute. There were like nine or ten of those in there. And then there's this, in this same little package for $3, was this third third edition from 1962, Chanson's De Notre Chalet. Um, our chalet built in 1932 and in Adelboden, Switzerland, is the gift of Mrs. James Starrow of Boston, Massachusetts to the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts. To this chalet come every year many hundreds of girl guides and girl scouts from all corners of the world. Here singing forges a many link of, friend, of friendship. So, and this was their um, their songbook. Some of it's in English, but most of it's not. Anyway, I thought that was kind of cool. And that was in there as well. And then another little Christmas carol book. Um, this one doesn't say I was going to see what else it says this one's from the Lumberman's Mutual Casualty Company oh there's a bunch of insurance companies that put this one out but um, it doesn't have a date in it anywhere either anyway those were interesting And then I found this for a dollar. It's the insurance from the Williams Boyce Agency, all kinds of insurance and bonds from Amarillo, Texas. And um, it's a 1937 calendar book. And somebody's written in here, Baldwell Grocery, 23237. I bet that's the phone number. Um but in here they've got, um, listen to read this, this is funny, unforeseen events. The unforeseen is always happening. The Maryland offers you protection against the unexpected in more than 60 bonding and casualty insurance lines. Leading corporations and millions of homeowners, business executives and public officials are guarding themselves against the hazard in the followers' lines. And then it lists everything you can imagine. All kinds of bonds and health insurance and sickness insurance. Yeah, it says health insurance, group accident and sickness, manufacturers, industrial, mercantile, apartment, residence, and boiler and machinery, um, residence burglary, bank burglary and robbery, mercantile, open stock burglary, so um, workman's compensation, sports liability, team's liability, aircraft and airport public liability, sprinkler leakage, water damage, plate glass, check alterations and forgery. There's all kinds of things they would insure you against. But whoever had this um, made it into a recipe book. There's all kinds of cake recipes and 
um, stuff in here. And they didn't, you, you know, do very many of them. It's probably this much of the book. But at the bottom of each page, it has a different kind of insurance it talks about. Water damage insurance protects against accidental discharge, leakage, or overflow of water or steam. A sprinkler head is a sensitive piece of mechanism. Sprinkler leakage insurance prevents losses to property and stock. Every page has something like that on there, something they can insure you against. And this is the home office of the Maryland Casualty Company in Baltimore. And this is another recipe that was just stuck in here. Mrs. Bentley says, an elderly ranch woman gave me this recipe and we like it very much the sourdough it makes. So it's a sourdough bread recipe. Anyway, that, that's a cool little book. But the thing I really am so excited about the most is this set of railroad memorabilia. Um, the, the most recent stuff is from 1942, and the, most, the oldest stuff is from 1928. But there's all kinds of stuff in here. There's um, things that where this person, E.L. Connor, he was a foreman. And um, all of these, it's, I think these are his or his wife um, tickets that, that, where they rode on the railroad. Um, different railroads. I guess these were their, you know, complimentary ride tickets. Um, and then there was some um, Atchison, at, 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 I can't even say that. Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. Um, Missouri, Kansas, Texas. The Chicago Rock Island Pacific. Oh, I'm putting them all way up there and you can't even see them. Um, anyway, there's a whole bunch of these. Some of them are um, like here's an operator's license. And what else did I find in here that's not just a... Here's the dining stations ticket. This one's the American Railway... Railway Bridge and Building Association. So that's his membership card from 1930. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of different w ones in here. And um, I'm going to make, um, I'm going to scan these into the computer and print some copies off and send them out in happy mail. Um, and if somebody wants to, you know, to buy a, a PDF of them, I might do that too. Um, this is from the safety committee. So this guy, he was really, um, did a lot of stuff. Whoever E.L. Connor was. Anyway, some of them are really pretty, but that was, that was really cool. I was very excited to get these. Um, I was trying to see what else is in here. Anyway, I'm going to scan these all in the computer when I get a chance and, um, and I can make some copies of them and send out in happy mail. I think that'll be fun to share them. All righty. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bless you. Have a great day.